Hey everyone, it's Ivan, KidBadger.com, here to bring you part two in my Strawberry Mountain adventure, picking up where we left off. Well, I made it, took me, uh, let's see, two, three, four, almost five, almost five hours to get up here, and here I am, Strawberry Mountain. Technically, that's the summit back there, but I'm gonna call this good. I'll probably summit it tomorrow, maybe this evening, Probably not though. Right now, my boots are definitely wet. Gore-Tex with Gore-Tex uh, gaiters, and I don't know. I don't know if like the Gore-Tex stopped working, or more than likely, with these gaiters, basically my uh, it just didn't breathe, and so super sweaty and hot. And now they're getting super sweaty and cold because it's windy up here. Coming, coming up, I finally put away my camera. I'm like, no, I'm tired of this damn thing. Pain in the ass, stowed it. Proceeded to get lost kind of off and on. I knew I was going up and south, so there was that. One time I got like, man, I don't know where this trail is, but as I was going along, I finally found like a recognizing or recognizable sign of the trail, i.e. a big cut tree, felled tree. So I was like, all right, back on the trail. And then off and on the trail till I got up here where, whew, it's a lot of work. Having said that, it is cold and it's gonna get colder and I'm still kind of wet. So I'm gonna go ahead, find somewhere not directly in the wind getting blasted go ahead and uh, set up my tents kind of make camp get naked and put on some dry clothes so i'm gonna go do that All nice and changed. Dry socks felt amazing for about five minutes. And then I put my boots back on. Now they're all wet again. Whatever. It is what it is. Should have brought Gore-Tex socks, but I didn't. Pretty windy up here, a little bit chilly. And I'm surrounded by frozen water, but it's frozen. And I didn't end up bringing my usual like MSR Whisperlite International, had since I was a teenager. Actually, same with that tent. I've had that tent since I was a teenager. Probably need to re-waterproof it, re -waterproof it, and I should probably just replace it. But anyway, it's still going strong. Right now though, I need to get some water because I still have a liter, but I'm gonna be thirsty. And I'm also kind of hungry, probably gonna make some oatmeal. I didn't bring my Whisper Light International. I did bring a brand new unproven stove that I've never tried before by Uberlieben, I believe it's called. Company out of Bonner's Ferry. If I mispronounced it, sorry. It's probably not phonetic, sorry. But I'm gonna go ahead, scrounge up some wood. It doesn't take much. It's basically a little stainless steel deal and start feeding sticks in, get a little fire going. So I'm gonna get some sticks, find a place out of the wind and yeah, boil some water. One, for drinking, and two, probably to make something nice and warm, like some oatmeal. So, get after it. Upside of the snow being super deep is now 
There's a bunch of dead limbs that are actually within easy reach. Score. Ah! Almost fell. It's a trick. Everywhere you want to actually make your fire where you actually have some nice dry ground. It's exposed. The wind's howling up here. So I have basically a curtain of trees over there. Stopping the wind coming in this way. Gathered some sticks. I'm going to go find maybe a big piece of bark or something like that to keep my stove just up off of the snow and have a go at it. Pretty stoked on this little Uberlieben stove, I think it is. Whatever it's called. Probably mispronouncing it, but this water almost to a boil already uh, basically melted two of these full things of water. Keeps wanting to tip over on me though, because I don't have a good flat surface. Note to self. But I got two of these full containers into this. This is almost to a boil. I was going to go ahead and make some. Just like oatmeal and then i'm like man it's kind of getting late in the day i don't know that i want to fire this thing up again so i need some love actually so i'm going to uh why not have oatmeal when got some top ramen man highbrow backcountry fair so i'm gonna get that going in just a second the boil it's happening it's finally time Super excited about this because pretty much all day I've just been, I don't know, bulletproof coffee for the first half of the day and then granola bars, stuff like that. Not even legit ones either. They're basically ones out of my boy's lunch. Definitely some moss in there. I'm gonna go ahead and chalk it up as fiber, I guess. All right, three minutes, let's do this thing. As a general rule, food, oh shit. Never mind. I'll pay attention. What I was going to say was, as a general rule, food usually tastes pretty good, at least good food. But if you have food that maybe isn't super good, like Top Ramen, it still tastes amazing when you're hungry, especially out in the backcountry. And that might be it for the fire. Good thing the noodles are about done. I coaxed my fire back to life. They were pretty much done cooking, but I wanted to get the fire going again. And, man, backcountry top ramen. Pretty much the best top ramen you can ever eat. I don't want all that. All right, this is happening. That ramen was some of the best ramen of my life, but I need some protein, so I also brought some sardines up. I don't know why I chose, well, probably because they didn't have any like packs of tuna and I didn't want a can that I needed a tool to open. Ergo, got some sardines while I wait for my broth to cool off enough so that I can actually Oh, I still want to get this all over myself. Wait for that to cool so that I can actually drink it because it's delicious. Boom. Sardines, man. And mustard, I guess. I don't know if I realized I bought that. 
don't think I've ever tried them like this. Whatever, I'm hungry. Here I am at the end of the day. I ended up getting a pretty good fire going, even though it was windy. Filmed basically kind of a how to get into contracting and what security contracting actually is video. I don't know, we'll see how it came out, whatever. But did that after I ate and uh, yeah, just kind of wind down and about 9.30. I think I'm gonna go to sleep. Hopefully not gonna have to get up to go pee because it's cold. My boots are still wet. When I was over by the fire, my feet were cold and wet. Well, my feet were cold and wet leading up to the fire. Then I was by the fire and then my feet were warm and wet. And then eventually they got cold and wet once I left the fire, but whatever. I got them. Um, They'll probably be really cold in the morning, but I have a pair of dry socks that I dried out today. So tomorrow I'll dry out the other pair and eh, see what tomorrow holds. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com and look forward to seeing you next time. Not bad.